Gamers, welcome back to the channel. I'm Gypsy and I am doing another one of my Aspie videos um, because I did get a lot of response on the last few that I had uploaded and I did promise you guys that I would keep the series going on this channel. First, I want to kind of add a disclaimer that I do have really bad eye contact. I'm working on that, but I've never been good at it, so if you guys see my eyes just darting all over the screen, um, it's not because I'm trying not to look into the camera. It's just I don't know where to look. So that's number one. Number two, I I did receive my official Asperger's diagnosis since my last video that I had done, and I told you guys I would update you on that, so I am absolutely planning to do that. And um, I didn't want to talk about that right now in this video, but that's coming. So just hang tight. Um, I'm going to get into all the details of my diagnosis process. The other thing is, before I get into the topic of this video, I want to address how there's like a little bit of a controversy about whether or not people who diagnosed with my condition should refer to our condition as Asperger's or autism and honestly I do think there is a difference but at the same time I do think that they are kind of related because there's a lot of like mm, discourse within the community of autistic people and Asperger's people where some of them agree that autism should be the umbrella diagnosis for all the conditions on the spectrum and then there are those who have previously been diagnosed as specifically Asperger's or um, high functioning autism and they prefer to keep that diagnosis going so they don't really acknowledge that autism covers their condition as a whole they like the specification of being labeled as Asperger's versus autism so I understand that this is something that's been an ongoing conversation in this community for a long time since those diagnoses were kind of grouped into one and in my official diagnosis it does say autism spectrum disorder not Asperger's because the Asperger's diagnosis no longer officially exists but my um, the person who was evaluating me who gave me the diagnosis she clarified to me that had the distinction been available for her to diagnose me otherwise she absolutely would have diagnosed me with Asperger's instead of autism so I just wanted to make that clear that I am aware of that but I do refer to myself as an Aspie and um, some people you know were were stating that they felt that I should not refer to myself that way and just consider myself an autistic person because it would cause all this confusion or something but I like the distinction between the two because it's more specific to what I'm actually dealing with and I do still also consider myself part of the autism spectrum disorder community even though I identify with the Aspie side of the spectrum because I do think that they're all related and so for me I'm not bothered by the fact that I have an ASD diagnosis in fact I'm glad that I have an ASD diagnosis because I feel like my condition is taken more seriously when I need it to be considered for some reason um, if I just say oh I have Asperger's like people don't really know what Asperger's is they don't they're not that familiar with it and they don't understand the other I guess n invisible or non you know obvious symptoms that we suffer from with Asperger's so when I just say oh, I'm autistic people have a better reaction to that because they're a little bit more familiar with it even though of course they're all like oh, you're autistic how <laughs> you know what I mean so I just wanted to throw that out there and just clarify that before I get into this topic what I wanted to talk about today is how autism affects my life my daily life and I do get a lot of people asking me like how am I autistic they don't they don't think that I fit into some kind of, I don't know, preconceived notion of whatever autism entails. So it's kind of difficult for them to understand that my condition um, puts me at a disadvantage with certain things. 
even though for the most part it seems like I'm pretty normal, whatever that means. So I'm going to talk about how this affects me on a daily basis. And don't get me wrong, autism is like a superpower. Like there's certain things that because I have Asperger's, I can do effortlessly that other people struggle with. And they're like, how on earth are you doing that? You know what I'm saying? But the things that I am really good at doing are not things that necessarily you need to be able to do in order to survive in society. The things I need to be able to do are the things that I struggle with. On the flip side, it seems like neurotypical people have a very easy time adapting and doing these things that we all need to be able to do to function in society. So don't, you know, get confused as to what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about the bad side of it just because that's all there is to it. There's two sides to this disorder. Okay, so one of the things that I deal with regularly are sensory issues. For me, I would say of all of the symptoms that I suffer from, that my ASD affects, um, sensory problems is my number one issue. It's It can be debilitating to the point where I cannot... I can't be outside my house and like do things uh, with other people or be at work. I, it's just very interfering with my day-to-day -day activities. And in my opinion, I think that it has gotten worse since I was a child to now because when I was younger, I had, I didn't know I had ASD and I had a very strong suspicion that I wasn't normal or like I wasn't like everybody else, but because I was so driven to try to fit in as a kid, I forced myself to develop coping mechanisms and the ability to mimic other people so that I could hide my symptoms a little bit easier and it just went undetected and for the most part I could kind of get away with just being labeled a weirdo and that was enough to kind of slip under the radar. So it wasn't as bad um, back then because I had a way to cope with it and also because I had a really rough childhood that like if my mom was watching this right now she'd be like that's not true I take good care of her but I'm telling you guys I had a really traumatic traumatic childhood and I'm not shy about it anybody who's like who wants to hear about it I, I'll tell you guys in a video what happened to me when I was a kid but my childhood was chaotic and I kind of grew up really fast so because I had so much pressure and distractions just in my day-to-day -day life I felt like those things were distracting me from my sensory issues so my problems outside of my body were greater than the pain I was feeling from the sensory problems that I wasn't really paying attention to the sensory problems now as an adult and having lived very stable for quite some years um, I feel safe, I feel like I have more control over my life, and my life is very stable for the most part. So I don't have all the stressors that I used to have when I was younger, and I know you guys are, some of you guys are watching this like, uh, Gypsy, you're still young, what are you talking about? Like, you're talking about it like it was so long ago. And uh, I'm an old lady, okay? I'm an old lady. I'm 32 years old, all right? American years. I'm not a little kid, so... <laughs> I've been through some stuff, okay, and now I can say for at least the past 8 to 10 years, like, my life has been very, very um, stress-free. So, now that I don't have those outside stressors, it's almost as if my sensory issues that I've been able to control for a long time because I've, I've been a stay-at-home mom for, like, a while. Adonis normally worked um, for the majority of the time that we've been together, and... I just stayed home with the kids, so I have been able to control my environment almost 100% and have been in this, you know, safe zone where I don't glitch as much. And when I say glitch, that's the term that I use to kind of express having like a Asperger's, you know, mental breakdown kind of a thing where I'm just like spaced out, I can't function, my mind just goes somewhere else. So I just call that glitching. <laughs> so in my current home life, I don't really have a reason to be glitching. But then in the past couple of years, since I started working again, and have to be around people and have to be outside of my house for eight to nine hours at a time, 
traveling in the car, um, having to get dressed to go to work and be in my uniform at work. Like so many things are making me very aware of my my triggers that create the sensory overload issues that I have. Um, and that's what really made me start going to seek medical help because I'm like, am I going crazy? Like, why Why do I get nauseous when I'm just like, I feel like I have motion sickness sometimes, but I'm not, I'm not in a vehicle. There's no reason for me to feel like that and literally be like, like gagging while I'm out in public and stuff because I just, I can't take it. So come to find out, of course, now I understand that I have a sensory processing problem and that's why sometimes these things happen to me, but it's very, it's like a huge interference in my work life because I can't be at work without these unpredictable things happening to me and then I'm just now I'm just glitched out like I have to reset my brain I'm like hyperventilating it's crazy like I'll be at work just breaking into a hot sweat um and I get hot really fast too so at my job I've been able to work with a fan at my workstation for like a little over a year and then all of a sudden um this happened recently all of a sudden one of our new managers came through and like forced us to get rid of the fan and then when I went to him and asked him for the fan again after maybe a couple of months of not having it he got rid of the fan because he thought it was cluttering up our counter you know I'm like you know I need to be accommodated for my disability I cannot work without a fan I need the fan there so I can cool down so I don't have like a panic attack or something and he refused to give me the fan so I did end up having a panic attack that day at work. This was like a couple of weeks ago and I collapsed and they had to call the paramedics. It was a whole thing. My, my blood pressure was like 200 over like, I don't know. It was a really, really huge number, like ridiculous numbers. And the paramedics were thinking that I was going to have a stroke and they were like telling me, oh, you got to go to the hospital. It was really crazy and scary, you guys. So something that bad has not happened to me before that incident but that was like a lesson to me to take my condition seriously and not to just laugh it off or you know just tell myself oh you're imagining it because that's what I would do for a long time I would just tell myself I was going crazy and I don't really feel these things I'm feeling I'm just imagining it all and it's not imaginary it's real so that's just one experience um that is like an extreme example of how this thing affects me but the sensory issues are what i struggle with the most um i have this thing where i cannot lay on my sheets in the bed on my stomach with my toes touching the sheets because if my toenail this part of my toenail rubs against the sheet in some way or touches it it's very cringy like you know like i say that it's painful but it's not painful in the sense of I'm feeling actual pain. It's painful in the sense of it's like unbearable. Like I I don't know if I'm explaining this good enough for you guys to understand. I know it sounds pretty silly, but it's just unbearable. Like you know when you hear like fingernails scratching a blackboard and people say that it hurts their ears. Your ears are not actually feeling pain, but that sound, that screeching noise is like very very irritating. And it makes your whole body just tingle and like cringe. That's what happens to me when my toenails rub against my sheets. So it's a dilemma because I do like to lay on my stomach. But (laughs) unless I have like a pillow propped underneath my foot so that my feet don't actually touch the bed. It's really crazy trying to get to sleep at night. So I don't know. And then I also have insomnia, which a lot of people that have autism, I think, have. Um, the reason why my insomnia is so persistent for me is because at night I cannot shut my brain down. Like I don't have something in my mind that says it's nighttime, you're tired, go to sleep, shut down. Like that does not happen to, for me at all. So my um, doctor's office prescribed me trazodone, which is a sleeping aid. And 
that's what I take every night in order to get to sleep. But to be honest, I have to take the Trazodone in, in like a combination of different pills, like a cocktail of pills, in order for them to interact with each other so that I can actually fall asleep. Otherwise, if I just take the Trazodone, I'll just... I don't know. I'll, I just It takes me a long time to actually fall asleep. But I haven't told my doctor that it takes me so long to fall asleep because I don't want her to feel compelled to up the dosage. Um, I just want to stay at the dose that I'm at right now. So, yeah, because I don't, I already take so many medicines for diabetes, and then I'm taking medicine for um, anxiety, which is part of my disorder. Like, when you have Asperger's or autism, you don't just have that condition. Like, that condition is the, the umbrella term for all the other conditions that you are suffering from, in addition to, you know what I'm saying? So... Because autism is a neurological disorder where your brain is just wired differently from other people's. So you don't process things the same way that they do. You don't think the same way they do. You don't have the same um, ability to absorb certain information that other people can. For example, a lot of people that have autism have very poor social skills. They're like socially awkward or very uncomfortable like around other people but it's not because we don't want to be around other people it's just we need things to be a certain way and people are very unpredictable they do things that are unpredictable um it's not there's no like routine or certainty to being around other people so it's difficult for us to be in that environment socially without getting anxious nervous um, even scared sometimes because you really don't know how to behave around other people there's all these like unwritten rules like when is it your turn to talk in a conversation when is it time for you to say excuse me you know or um, where do you look when you're talking to the person what does that gesture mean that they just did to you like it's all the stuff you have to interpret that I think neurotypical people just take for granted. They just absorb this information as they get older. And from like their teenage years on, they just know how to like interact with people in day-to-day -day life. But for me, I feel like, you know, I told Adonis, I'm like, I'm socially retarded. Like that's basically what it is. So when I get around other people, I'll just act really bizarre and they don't know why I'm acting that way. But because I come off like this eccentric, confident person, I totally just get a pass because they're like, oh, Gypsy's just being her crazy self. Like, they don't really pay attention to it when they know me well. You know what I'm saying? So, I do like to be around people. And if you notice, most, most people that have autism, like, they have their small circles of friends. They have their family members or people that they've known for a long time. And that's their go-to group of people to associate with. New people coming into the scene is when they have problems. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how it is for me. But like I said, I've had years and years and years of training myself to blend and mimic other people's behaviors. So I'm pretty good at kind of like blending in and not seeming as though I'm freaking out in my head when I have new relationships that I have to keep up in order to get things done. Um... People perceive me to be a very outgoing person like you guys here on YouTube and you know when you guys are in our Instagram lives I'm, We're just talking to you like we're regular Friends like we've known each other our whole lives that kind of thing. I'm pretty good at doing that um, I'm not scared to talk to strangers and I'm very open So I'll just tell people personal things about myself, but the flip side of that is Like I don't get sometimes that other people aren't like that so when I run into a stranger, I will ask a stranger, like, you know, I'll say something to them like, oh, oh, it's Mother's Day. What are you going to do for Mother's Day? And then they say, my mom died, so I'm not going to do anything for Mother's Day. Just think about my mom, I guess. And like, most people would probably say, oh, I'm sad to hear that. I'm sorry about your loss. That's not something that I would say. I would say something like, well, how'd she die? Because <laughs> I really want to know. What happened to your mom? You know what I'm saying? Then after they tell me the story of how they died, I would be like, oh my God, that is so sad. Oh man, I don't know how I would react in that situation. But initially, I'm not like, let me console you. Because I'll think to myself, 
your mom's been dead for like a while like my dad he died when i was like 10 so when people say to me now oh i'm sorry for your loss i'm like why are you sorry you didn't kill my dad like what it was so long ago i'm 30 years old now why are you still sorry you know what i'm saying like to me it doesn't make any logical sense to react that way but it does make sense to say how did they die because that's like you know you're just gonna tell me somebody died and not tell me how like what was the cause of it that's a logical thing to wonder you know what i'm saying so that's just me but i feel like this is something that probably a lot of um aspies and autistic people have in common with each other and you can relate to what i'm talking about um where neurotypical people would be like that's like an asshole move why why would you do that you know what i'm saying so that happens a lot i get mistaken for being a bitch i guess but only by the people that really know me well when that i'm not acting around everyone else outside of my household they think i'm like the sweetest person on the planet because i'm really good at customer service i'm really good at just being like oh my god really wow that's awesome like i'll do that when i'm outside the house because i don't give a shit about the people that are talking to me like they're all superficial i don't think they're smarter than me i think whatever they're talking about is irrelevant it makes no sense they have no logic behind anything they're doing and saying but if i told them that they would think i was an asshole so i would just be like wow really okay oh my god well let me know how that works out for you like i can see relationships that are going to be at a demise like immediately as soon as one of my friends says oh i'm dating this person like i can almost give you a time frame of how long that relationship is gonna last based on character traits that i'm just picking up when i'm like you know around these people but if i said that to my friend she'd hate me so i just keep it to myself and i'll be like oh my god that's so cute oh yeah i hope it works out then six months down the line this girl's crying to me oh he was a fucking asshole and i'm like uh -huh, i could have told you that <laughs> you know but i just i just don't do that because i don't want people to think that i'm being an ass but really i'm just being logical you know what i'm saying so that's another thing that i deal with um on the social spectrum i just don't know how to be around people all this intangible just unspoken rules of society i don't i don't freaking give a shit about it to be honest i don't care and that's a hindrance to me sometimes because i have to pretend like i care when i'm around people and it's exhausting like i'll get home and i'll just shut down like my brain will just be like and i don't want anybody to talk to me i don't want to discuss anything that happened during the day i don't want to think about anything i just want to be like in a mindless zoned out state so i'll like turn on netflix and something that soothes me is like scary stories horror movies um i don't know like true crime stories i don't know why like people will say oh that's negative stuff you can't fill your brain with negative things or you're gonna attract bad things to yourself but i don't know it's always been like that for me like scary stories and like stories that are like true crime type of stuff for some reason soothes me it makes me very relaxed i don't know why but i don't know if i really analyze that i could probably tell you why but i've never really analyzed why that stuff relaxes me but i hate i don't like watching like comedies romantic stuff i don't really like to watch that stuff it just i don't know something about it is just ugh, puts me off it seems very like fake maybe that's what it is but when i hear like scary things it's just easier for me to get lost in the story and not think about my life so you know that's how i cope a lot of times and i do things like this this is like a wax melt that's scented that i carry around with me and sniff it <laughs> and i do it at work <laughs> and people walk by and they're like what are you doing and i'm like oh, it smells so good but it 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 distracts me from other sensory input that i'm getting that i like i was gonna make me freak out or something um it takes my mind off of that stuff so i'll do things like that i'm like a texture junkie another thing that affects me in a negative way um other than my sensory issues and my social issues is that it's hard for me to make up my mind about stuff like i have to really think everything through like multiple scenes of how this thing could go wrong backup plans i have to really really think things through thoroughly before i feel comfortable making a decision so like you know there's like this inside joke with my family that when we go out to eat 
And and when I say, oh, I'm going to eat something new today. I'm going to eat something different. Like, that's like code for I'm never going to make up my mind. Everybody else order before me because I'm going to be sitting here looking at this menu for a long time. And I always do. And like Adonis will joke and tell the waiters that I'm not from this country. So, <laughs> and I've never had so much food to choose from. So that's why I'm taking so long to pick up the food. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and some people will just be looking like so awkward. Like they don't know if they should laugh or if they should just be quiet and be like, okay, take your time. But oh my God, it's so funny. So, um, things like that, um, I'm really fidgety, and the fidgeting at home, it's pretty bad, it's bad, but I feel like my family's so used to the way that I am, that they almost don't notice, like, if they do notice, they never, they don't tell me that they notice, um, occasionally Adonis will start to see me fidgeting, and he'll just like no to ask me hey do you need a fan are you hot like do you want me to change the sheets he'll 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 kind of know when to be prompted to ask me if i need some kind of change to stop being so fidgety but it's more often now than it has been in the past years because he knows for sure that i have asperger's now so he'll recognize these things but for a long time like my family was so used to it they just don't even notice how fidgety i am and so I can't lay still in the bed. Like, I'm always, like, moving around, kicking my legs up, trying to wrap my whole leg around a pillow. Um, the, the sheets, I need the sheets to be, like, straight. I can't have different parts of my body on different kinds of blankets and sheets because the difference in the textures drives me nuts. Like, it's so distracting to me. <laughs> and another problem I'll have is that when I glitch, when I'm having the sensory overload going on, People will start talking to me and then I can't understand a word they're saying. Like, it just all sounds like gibberish. Their mouths are moving, but I can't make out the words. And it takes me, like, a while to, for it to sink in. And then I'm like, oh, okay, they asked me for a fork. Oh, I forgot what a fork was for a second there. That happens to me quite a bit, especially in the morning. So, I need time for my, like, brain to, you know, to to reset itself so that I can function around people because if I had it my way I would just be like in the house with the AC blowing all year round surrounded by dolls and Netflix scary stuff like I I feel like I watched everything on Netflix that's scary like I'm running out of things to watch and <laughs> and just have like you know the specific things I like to eat um, at my disposal and then that's it you know what I mean like I'm not scared to travel um, outside of my comfort zone if I have a security blanket person with me like Adonis or one of my kids I feel very uncomfortable when I'm like driving by myself for some reason I just get really anxious and have anxious thoughts and I always feel like I'm gonna be lost because I can't remember the route to where I'm supposed to go it's crazy you guys I like ha I have to have a GPS I don't care if I'm traveling in my own neighborhood or the next state over, I have to have a GPS to feel safe driving someplace, even if I've been there a million times. So, yeah, that's pretty much what it is for me um, as far as, like, the negative sides of my Asperger's affecting me. And if you can relate to anything I'm talking about, drop it in the comments. I want to hear about your experience. If you know somebody who has this condition or you suspect has this condition, I'm hoping that this video and my other videos help for you to get some perspective on how to help that person um, or to identify what the issue might be. Of course, I feel like you should not self-diagnose if you can try to get a real diagnosis from a medical professional. And don't be scared, they're going to misdiagnose you because the symptoms of autism mirror symptoms of many other disorders and it's possible that you're not really autistic but that you have one of these other disorders that manifests itself like um asperger's so i would want to know i would want to know what the issue is so i would know how to tackle my problem but definitely if you can if you have the resource available to you i would say to go and get a diagnosis Otherwise, if you are suffering from any of these issues that I mentioned, like sensory, processing problems, um, social issues, 
you don't know how to interact with people and things like that. Anxieties, um, you know, depression. Don't just ignore it. Address the issue, even if it's as simple as just talking to somebody that you know about it, like a friend of yours or whatever. And of course, you guys can talk to me. So make sure you drop me a comment if you want me to engage in a conversation with you about these things. And um, follow me on Instagram too, because we talk about everything on our Instagram um, weekly live video sessions, not just about dolls. So of course, we love talking about dolls too. But if you want to talk about any like real life issues, absolutely, you can go there and talk to us about it. And we're more than happy to have these conversations with you guys. And I am an advocate for grown-ups on this channel. So if you are a child, thanks for watching. But this channel really is designed to be a safe space for grown-ups to discuss certain things. So I'm not ever going to sugarcoat my language or like bring my wording down to a child's level here. I just I don't feel comfortable doing that and it's my channel and if you want child friendly content there's a million places on YouTube to go for that with the same exact information that I'm giving so I just want to make that clear for those of you who uh, are maybe young kids that are asking about you know diagnoses processes and things like that or I don't know I don't know about that stuff because I got diagnosed as an adult at 31 years old so um, I can only tell you what I know about so I'm not rejecting you guys, but I'm just saying don't be disappointed if I don't come at you right away with some response that you're expecting because I don't have knowledge on certain things that pertain to children. Um, okay, so that's all I'm going to say for right now, and I guess I will talk to you guys later. I tell you to have a dolly day, but this is not really a doll video, so I guess I'll just be like, peace. Now she